Hey everyone, it's me Kirk Maston here at Maston Labs and today we're going to be talking about how to edit skin tones in Lightroom. It's on everyone's mind, they want to get the skin tones right, you want to make them beautiful and I'm going to show you how to make that easy and simple and painless. So let's get started. First I'm going to quickly go over our three-step workflow. It's something really important to us here at Maston Labs because we pride ourselves in making editing simple. So all you need to do is apply the preset, then adjust exposure. Usually this is up a little bit because your camera center wants to protect highlights. And lastly, you're going to adjust white balance and tint to taste to bring out that extra 1% of ultimate goodness out of your photo and make the skin tones perfect. All right, let's dive in. I'm gonna show you how this all works and let's get started. All right, so you, this image is probably familiar to you because it is the one that we used for the cover of this show. Um, oh yes, also at any point while you're watching this, if you have any questions at all, please put them in the comments and I'm more than happy to answer them and help you in any way that I can. So don't hesitate, there's no bad questions, put them in the comments, Casey will let me know and I'll answer them live. So, all right, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so with this image, well, actually with all of our images, we're going to be exploring a variety of skin types. And I'll tell you right now that what it really boils down to is A, how you want your skin to look. So everyone has a slightly different definition of what nicely edited skin looks like. Um, but I would say most people can agree that they want it to be fairly accurate to that person's actual skin. And then second, they want it to be flattering. So those are things to keep in mind. So what preset you use is really important because they're all made differently and they all come from real film. And those films have layers and layers of chemicals that re react to different colors differently and shift the hue, saturation, or luminance to different points to get that aesthetic of that film. And that is what makes a film unique. Um, so you're working around how these films were created with kind of, uh, they were created with an intent, uh, an aesthetic direction. Often those are not linked to reality. They are an interpretation of a color. And so keep that in mind while you're working with skin tones. Second, the second thing to keep in mind is the way that the image <clears throat> was actually shot, the kind of light, the background, the ground reflection, reflection off of grass, things like that. That's gonna really impact skin tone as well. So that, to, to sum it all up, the preset or film you shoot in and the light that you're shooting in, those combined with powers combined plus a little bit of your editing magic, you're gonna get the skin tones you either love or hate. So I will keep all that in mind and edit these photos here from our community and show you what I mean and point you in the direction of the right preset to use for different skin tones or at least give you a clue as to what direction you should go in. <sighs> okay, deep breath. All right, here we go. So with this image by Tomas Rabatur, um, her skin tone is, I'm going to guess that she is Caucasian or maybe like, maybe partially Hispanic, I'm not sure. But her skin tone is not like pure white. Like, you know, if you see someone with red hair and they have like super white skin, she is, her skin tone is quite a bit darker from that. I would say it's more olive skinned. Um, her type of skin tone, this olive skin, is the, in my opinion, the easiest skin type to edit with any film or preset because it doesn't have a lot of um, underlying uh, color in it that's biased one way or the other. For example, a lot of darker skin tones have a lot of orange built up in the skin tone layers themselves. So, for example, if you're going to um, the mall, well, when people used to go to the mall, and you would go to the makeup section, the person helping you would try to find a makeup that matches your undertone. So your skin tones that you already have. And you're trying to align the right makeup with the right undertones to get a nice flattering look. And the same thing happens with presets. So if you have very, very dark skin, Usually you are working with a lot of oranges and a little bit of red in the undertones of that skin and that's going to affect what preset or film you use. 
if you are working with a client who has Caucasian, like very light Caucasian skin, um, you, your undertones are not so orange forward. They're actually just very pale and neutral. Um, and so you may want to find a preset or film that has orange in it to enhance those colors to make the skin look healthier and so on. If you have all of all of colored, if you have all, an olive complexion, which is kind of like in between, um, you have a little bit of red and orange in your skin, but not a lot. And so it's very flexible. And, and I'll show you on this image, you can use pretty much anything and it's going to look really good. And then we will go into more very distinct skin tones that are very uh, further on either end of the spectrum. And, and I'll show you where it kind of breaks down and where you're going to have to be very particular about what you use. All right. Gosh, everyone's like, just stop talking and just edit. I'm here to see the edit. So with this image, I'm going to start with Fuji 400H. That was what it was edited with um, on the banner. And doing our three-step workflow, I'm going to apply the preset, increase the exposure, and I'm looking to kind of shift the midtones. So that's this midtone section here on the histogram. Um, I'm looking to shift that towards the center to kind of get a neutral exposure. And then I am going to adjust temperature and tint to taste. So looking at her, at her skin and knowing that originally, you know, I can see that she has kind of olive colored skin. I'm going to go just a little bit warmer and lean into what her skin type is. I'm not going to try to make it um, super pale uh, or super orange. I'm going to try to work with her skin tone the way it naturally is and enhance it. So I'm going to go a little bit warmer. Um, if I went too warm, you know, you can even see in the background here, it's starting to get super warm in the bar. And it just, and even in her, uh, her hat, I don't know what you call this, uh, her head headpiece is getting too warm. Even her dress is getting too warm. And I can look at a neutral color like this countertop, which is like probably a gray kind of aluminum or steel, and it's starting to get too warm. So if I'm going too warm, I just back it back down a little bit until the neutrals snap into place, but her skin still looks really nice. Um, tint is very hard for a lot of people. Tint is the, the difference between uh, green and magenta. It takes a little more practice. Again, if you've seen all my other videos on looking uh, on how to, how to set tint, you'll see that I always look for a neutral in the image and go from there. The only neutral in this image is this countertop. I mean, that I can be absolutely sure of. So looking at this countertop, I would say it's not too green or too magenta. It looks like a very neutral gray. So I think that's it. That is how I am editing this photo. And it was three steps. I followed the three step workflow. Um, it, it enhances her natural skin tone. Uh, you know, actually now looking at it, maybe it needs to be a little bit magenta. So maybe one or two points. Yeah, right about. What about there? Uh, it brings out her natural skin tone without it looking like wildly off. So it's a very nice way to edit this photo. That being said, I'm going to make a virtual copy of it. And if I were to go to a different pack, so this is Fuji 400H from Fuji Color Original. This is very uh, neutral and easy to use pack. If I, were, if I were to go to a more extreme pack like, and ex extreme doesn't make it bad, it's just a very differently formulated film and preset from that film. If I went to Ektar, which is like the most colorful film and preset from that film made, I can't think of anything more colorful, uh, we're going to get quite a, a different result. So I'll show you what Ektar 100 would look like. So this is like the most color you can have in a preset or, or that we make from an actual film. Um, Ektar is a spiritual successor to Kodachrome. Uh, I don't think it looks exactly like Kodachrome, but it's meant to look like a really super saturated slide film. And this look is really fun. I mean, it's super fun. It's sun kissed. We can tone it down a little bit with temperature, you know, get a little bit more neutral skin tone, but this is a completely different vibe than this photo. Um, I'll show you than the previous one. 
Let me make these a little bit smaller. All right, so we have Ektar on the left, Fuji 400H on the right, totally different vibes. Um, even neutralizing Ektar is just super bright and colorful. If you want that vibe in your photo, it's great, but I can say it certainly does not exactly look like her real skin if we went to the raw image. Now, is this bad? I don't know. It depends on what you're trying to get across. If photography for you is about absolute realism, um, then frankly, stick with digital. Don't use any presets. Don't shoot film. If you want everything to be exactly the way it looks, like if you're a catalog shooter, then don't use anything. As soon as you use any kind of film or preset, you're making an artistic choice. And I would say in this image, at least, if you wanted a more sophisticated look where you're honoring her actual real skin tone, I would stay within the Fuji range of films and presets, specifically the Fuji original pack. On the other hand, if you're shooting for, I don't know, like a music festival or something, and you're trying to get across like a really like upbeat, sunny vibe, then you can go a little bit crazy with something like Ektar, which is extra colorful. Is it her actual skin tone? No. If you walked into a place and you saw someone with a uh, skin that was like super duper saturated in, in kind of that orange direction, um, you would think that it, something is wrong. However, when we're looking at a photo, we know it's a photo and it's an artistic choice that you're looking at. And so in that way, it works. Totally up to you. I wanted to show you these two looks because they are the two most popular looks that we make. Bar none. It's wild. They couldn't be more different. Uh, Ektar is from the Adventure Everyday pack and Fuji 400H is from the Fuji Original pack. Okay, and as I mentioned in the beginning, she has olive toned skin, which is in fact the easiest to edit. If I went back to the original, you can see it's kind of in the in you know middle of the road. So it kind of works either way. Let's go to a completely different image. Uh, this is by Tom. This is not by Tomas Rabater. This is by Marek Virzbiki. I'm assuming the W is a V. Uh, and Marek asked for Ektar. So we just tried Ektar back here. Let's see how it works here. And then I will make my recommendation for her skin tone. So here is Ektar. It is super duper, turn it to 11, saturated. Um, I applied the preset. The exposure is, I would say the highlights are blowing out a little bit here. Um, but the midtones are where I want them. So I'll show you a trick in a second to deal with that. But here's the preset. Exposure is where I want. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm going to dial down the temperature just to kind of uh, reduce that orangeness. If I go too low, then it's, it's way too cool. So sometimes I even start like a really low temperature and just work my way up until it looks right and don't go any further. So right about there, she's still very orange. Looking at the neutrals on her jacket, I'm assuming this is black, her jacket is black. Um, it looks like temperature and tint is correct. I would expect to see a lot of ground reflection because <clears throat> she's standing like in all this green. Usually ground reflection is like green light coming from below her off of the grass up into her face. I hate it. It's like one of the worst things that we have to deal with as photographers, but somehow I don't see it too much on her. So maybe she's standing on a road or something in front of the green and we don't have that green ground reflection. So awesome, Merrick. You don't have gr green ground reflection. Congratulations, because that's really hard to deal with. Um, and here's the last little trick before I dive more into talking about skin tone. So uh, we've got this kind of like extra bright area on her face, chest, and arm. This comes from the actual photo itself. It's just a high overcast day. One thing you can do to deal with that is use uh, Highlight Soft. So that's just part of our included with every pack that we make. Um, we've got a tone profile section, which helps you deal with contrast in the highlights or shadows or both. In this case, I'm going to either knock down the highlights with highlight soft or knock down the highlights and bring up shadow detail with all soft. I think I'm going to do all soft actually. So that is a 
start to finish edit with Ektar. And that's what uh, Merrick requested. I would say that the vibe of this image is kind of a professional business portrait. I want to treat her skin tone a little bit different. Um, this isn't a an ad for like, I don't know, Carnival in Brazil or something where you've got like tons of color. This is a kind of a business, you know, type of portrait. So considering her skin tone, which I don't know, it's very, yeah, it's Caucasian, you know, white Caucasian. Um, it's got some undertones of yellow in it, which could be just the white balance. Let me see here. I think I would go for more, something more in the realm of, I mean, not to be boring, but to probably back to Fuji 400H or possibly something in Fuji Everyday Original. Ah, uh, it's still too much yellow. Yeah. There we go. Okay, so Fuji 400H. I'm going to leave exposure where it is, just like I did before. Um, I'm going to bring down the temperature just a tiny bit. And the tint is maybe a little green. So I'm going to go up a couple points. Actually, I'm going to warm it up just a little bit. Okay. And the last thing I'm going to deal with this contrast range issue with all soft or all or uh, highlight soft. You know, actually, Fuji 400H is so low contrast, I'm going to leave it. Here is a comparison between Ektar and Fuji 400H. Um, in this case, I would say for this type of portrait, definitely Fuji 400H. It works with her skin tone in a way that feels professional. Uh, we have a question. Yeah, um, two things. So uh, Merrick, the person who took this image, said this is actually a kid's playground. Uh, here's Blosh. Oh, cool. Um, and then Vernon wants to ask, how do I knock down some of the uh, orange that is so strong in Ektar? Okay, so Vernon asks, yeah, how do I knock down that orange that's so strong in Ektar? Uh, Ektar is a film that just builds up orange and yellow and red. That is, that is, that is the spirit of that film. Uh, you can knock it down with the temperature slider. So I knocked it down here from where it was as shot. I mean, that's super warm as shot. Uh, my recommendation always when I see people talking about how orange Ektar is, is to just work that temperature slider down, you know, as low as you want to go. Um, at a certain point, it's just, you know, that's too cool. Like, look at the background behind her. Um, but you can kind of just globally look at the whole image and determine kind of a set point for that temperature. So me personally, it's somewhere like right in here. I'm just kind of wiggling this like right, right about here. And if this is too orange for you, you've, you, you're just using the wrong uh, preset for the look you want. Uh, if I was to draw a scale of like most exuberant, colorful, preset to least it would be Ektar is the most colorful there is by a landslide um, on the scale and then Fuji 400H or maybe Portrait 160 would be the least and that is where I would tackle this issue is that you have a toolbox with all these tools in it to make the kind of images you want to make Ektar cannot be your only tool like you you'll rarely find a preset one look that's going to cover everything forever and always. I do recommend trying to narrow it down to a few things so that you can maintain consistency. But um, it'd be like trying to build an entire house with a screwdriver. Uh, the screwdriver is really good for like some parts of building that house, but you're going to need different tools for different, different light, different colors of light, uh, different skin types that you're shooting. And also, last but not least, but maybe most importantly, the vibe vibe it's a very nebulous word uh but vibe is everything vibe the the aesthetic vibe is the new aesthetic thank you gen z um so the vibe is really important so as far as like getting rid of that orange it's all in the temperature slider my friend that's where it's at and if you drop this as low as you can go and you still don't like it then you just then there's nothing wrong with you it's just you need to find a different tool to use so I would work my way down that scale towards something in the Fuji, Fuji Color Original Pack, 
possibly Portra 160 from Portra Original. Let me show you that one. Um, something like that would work better. Here's Portra 160. Oh my gosh. Portra 160 is so desaturated that you can't, you just can't go from Ektar to 160. It looks broken. Um, <laughs> however, if I went, if I started at 160 in another photo, it would not look broken. Um, let's see, Portra 400. Yeah, Portra 400 would look really nice to kind of work your way down that scale. And that was a film that I shot so much of. I shot mostly film, well, hybrid, essentially, for almost 20 years. Like, right when film cameras, uh, or right when digital cameras came out, I was still in the newsroom and I was shooting digital and film. There were no presets back then. Uh, but then later, switching over to really a hybrid workflow and Portrait 400 was my favorite film because it was so versatile and it's very flattering for a lot of people. Um, so Merrick, I would actually maybe say Portrait 400 from the Portrait Original Pack would be a good one to lean into for this image. And I hope I answered your question, Vernon. Okay, so let's go to this image here. It's by Kristen Curet and Domain Hines. Uh, I love this image. You've probably seen it on the website. It's really great. Um, really cool moment. And let's talk about skin tone here and what works and what doesn't. So this is the raw image. Like I've done nothing at all. And if I zoom in, you can kind of start seeing the undertones in the skin. So you can see in the baby's skin, she's got a little more uh, yellow, and that, that's totally normal for babies. Uh, babies get jaundice and, well, I don't, I mean, I'm not saying it's jaundice, but it's something about babies, like baby's skin, all babies, is a little, they're a little bit more yellow in their undertones. Uh, whereas you get to an adult, and for example, his skin has more uh, red, a little bit of orange in the undertones. And he's kind of in between because he's, you know, he's not a baby, but he's not fully grown. Um, and you can see his skin tone has slightly different undertones than either of them. What I would recommend personally um, is that you would find a film or a preset that complements those undertones. Portra films in general were made for Caucasian skin and not darker skin because they, they emphasize orange so much. Um, it's just the way it is. It's just the way they're formulated. It's not a good or a bad thing, but it's, it, it works better, I think, with more Caucasian skin tones because of the undertone issue. Whereas any of the Fuji Color films, like Fuji Color Pushed, uh, Fuji Color Original, those films have a lot of red and cyan in them, and they emphasize those colors, and they complement darker skin tones really well. Um, if, if they were to be a makeup, they would be the foundation for that particular type of skin. Um, the, the difference isn't so drastic that it's unusable. Like, so if you are using anything from the portrait pack on darker skin, it's still not going to look terrible. It's just not completely optimized in my opinion. Um, however, maybe you've made it work. I don't know, but I would, I would naturally grab, gravitate towards like Fuji 400 age. Uh, or 160NS or 800Z for their skin or something in the Fuji Color Everyday pack, which is like a more pumped up contrasty um, Fuji pack. Well, kind of, it's like a, a relative. So in their, for their skin in particular, I think Superior 400 would look good. Um, <clears throat> so I apply that, I'm going to Adjust exposure down. I'm going to cool it off a little bit. It's far too yellow, uh, but yellow is not orange and orange is kind of what we're avoiding. So right about there is good. Here is before and after, and you can see that like it, something like Superior 400, which is a Fuji made film, emphasizes those reds in such a way that it, I think it looks really good on darker skin. If I myself had darker skin, I would be much more of an expert as to how it should look um, because I would, you know, I would know my own skin very well. But from my perspective, I think the Superior 400 looks really good on darker skin.
because of the undertone issues. Uh, let me see here. And if you are watching this and you have darker skin, please chime in and help me uh, if you think that I am, you know, editing too magenta, too green, too warm, too cool. Um, it's always a learning process. But let's try something else and I'll show you what I think won't work on their skin. So if I was to go to something that has a lot of orange in it, um, I think it would be too much. It would build up too much. It would be like undertones of orange with orange on top. And then you're just getting like mega orange, which I don't want. Uh, and that would be something in the portrait range. So portrait 400. Let me see. Let me just start over on this edit. Okay. Portrait 400. Um, I'm going to check the neutrals here. We warmed up just a little bit and then tint. Tint again is I'm looking for neutral colors. So I'm going to look at like the bedspread here. I'm going to look at this uh, wall. I can look at his watch band <clears throat> and see where things are getting either too magenta or too green. It looks a little bit too magenta to me. Well, let me see. Yeah, just a tiny bit. Let me go a couple points towards green. Right about there. <coughs> oh, pardon me. So this is with Portra 400. And as you can see, it doesn't look bad. I mean, if I, I, I don't think, I think if you deliver this to a client, they wouldn't be like, oh my gosh, like it's totally crazy. Um, but the orange in the Portra films building on top of orange, uh, you just get a skin tone that, I don't know, doesn't feel quite as nice as Superior which feels a little more neutral. So I'm just like looking at his arm. Whoa, see if I can line him up exactly. Um, I just feel like this, this looks nicer. Let me do a compare here. So on the left, we've got Superior 400 from the Fuji Everyday Pack. And on the right, we've got Portra 400 from the Portra Pack. Um, you can decide which one looks nicer to you, but you can see how they have a very different effect on skin tone according to the, to the undertones they're working with, with the preset on top. Okay. If you have any questions, please chime in. Like I love answering questions. So the more the merrier, um, actually, before I get to this, I wanted to take a detour for a second and talk about skin tone in another way, how to edit skin tone. So often we find ourselves in lighting situations where uh, you know, your, your subject is being blasted by either like gelled lights or you're working with a DJ or something where you've got like all these like up lights that are different colors. One thing that we get asked a lot is how do you correct for skin in these situations? And I think a lot of people expect to find a solution to correct this to like looking perfect. Like there was no purple light there at all. Um, but one thing to remember is that that's not really how the scene was. And so what I recommend is that you pick, you pick something that comp, uh, you pick a preset that gives you the vibe you're looking for, and then adjust the skin tone to show the light that you were in, but make it a little more dynamic by correcting some of it out. Let me give you an example. So let's take, this is a very contrasty image. Um, I'm gonna try 160 NS from the Fuji original pack, or maybe, yeah, I think 160 NS. Uh, 160 NS, awesome film. It's very, uh, it favors cyan and magenta a lot. So I'm gonna see how it works here. So I applied 160 NS, I'm going to increase the exposure. And now I'm going to adjust temperature and tint to not remove the purple because I could almost remove it, but I want to just make it a little more dynamic by removing enough purple to let other colors show. So if I wanted to remove the purple, by the way, I would do something like add as much green as humanly possible and then maybe cool it down. 
Uh, I can't even remove enough magenta. It's so magenta y. But this starts to lose that warm vibe that was happening in the photo when this photo was taken. So instead of doing that, I'm going to just remove like half of it. And what I'm looking for is uh, if you can look back here in the background, like this person, like wiping their eye or whatever's happening. Um, before I made that adjustment, she was like totally purple as well. And I'm starting to get like some kind of anchor of normal color in the photo. So there's some element somewhere in the photo, like down here. I know it's not the most exciting part of the photo, um, but I've got something for my eye to go to, to establish like reality. And then I know that they are in the right amount of purple from that purple up light. And that is how I would approach editing this. So here is before and after, and that is just a little trick um, where I'm not trying to get to their perfect natural skin tone. I'm just trying to get a neutral part of the image so that my eye and my brain can imagine that this is corrected. It's like a little sanity point in the photo. And this is by Salt and Pepper Photography. Okay, let's go to an example of when to use Portra on very, very pale skin. So we're going to the other end of the spectrum of, of uh, undertones that you're working with. So portrait films originally were made for more, they were tested and manufactured primarily for Caucasian skin or very light skin. And so the films themselves were formulated to have more orange and yellow in them, which made very pale skin look a little bit healthier. Uh, which had the unfortunate result of making uh, darker skin look too orange, but on paler skin, it was a nice kind of healthy glow. So if I were to reverse this and use, say, I don't know, Superior 400 on her, and I'm going to just fix the uh, temperature and tint exposure and all that. Get, me, get that green out of her hair. All right. There we go. Okay, so if I was, so I'm gonna reverse this situation. So this was Superior 400 and this was Portra 400. Okay, this is Superior 400 on this image. And now I'm gonna do Portra 400. Okay, so here's Portra 400. Um, get rid of that green in her hair. A little bit. Ah, boop, 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 boop. There we go. And exposure up just a tiny bit. Okay, now let's compare these. Okay, so on the left we've got Portra 400 that that has more of that orange yellow base to it. And you can see that like in her crown up here. Let's see if I can zoom in. You can see that in her crown, these yellows and oranges are a little, a little more emphasized and saturated. You can see it in particular in her hair. Uh, the luminosity of the orange and yellow is also higher in all, all the portrait films. Luminosity is just a super fancy pants term for brightness. Um, so the oranges and yellows are pumped up. The brightness is pumped up a little bit, which is again, very flattering on lighter toned skin or lighter colored skin. Um, whereas on the superior 400 side, you can, you can see the undertones of red and, and cyan and magenta, and you can see that in her skin and the luminance amount isn't quite as high. So you can see these little, uh, like little blotchy bits on her cheek. Also, we don't have as much saturation in the orange or yellow up here. Is it a huge difference to where like you would deliver this to a client and they'd be like, oh my God, why did you use Superior 400? This looks terrible. No, it just doesn't have the same warm glowiness of Portra 400 on her skin tone. And you can even see it in the, in the uh, carpet back here too, a little bit. 
So hopefully that is helpful. In a nutshell, if I was to make just like a really quick cheat sheet, it would be anything that starts with Fuji is, is generally really good on all of complexions or, or, or even darker skin tones. It, it really like works super well together. Um, anything with Portra in front of the name works really well on lighter skin tones. And that is like kind of a, a really good way to, to look at it. Um, Adventure Every Day, the film's in there. That's just if you want to set a vibe, like you want to be happy and cheerful or use Goal 200 and have it be nostalgic. That's where you go for that look. Or That's why it's called the Adventure Everyday Pack. The Fuji Everyday Pack uh, has a little bit for all skin types, all skin tones. Um, if you were to do C200, it, it kind of works like Portra in the sense that it's very warm. If you were to do Superior 400, it works it works like Superior 400 and Fuji 400H where it's really good for darker skin tones. So those are kind of split half and half. Hopefully that helps. We have tons of videos on every pack that we make and we also answer lots of questions in our community. Speaking of which, if you're not already part of the Mass and Labs community on Facebook, please join us. We are invested in your success as a photographer and there are no bad questions. So. Whether or not you own anything from Mass and Labs, just join us, check it out. We make videos every week. You make two videos a week, you'll love it. Uh, you can also submit your raw images to be edited with Mass and Labs so you can see what it looks like on your images in particular. Um, and then if you have any questions that you don't wanna just like put out in front of the group immediately, you can message us privately at m.me forward slash Mass and Labs, you'll go right into our direct messages and we're more than happy to help. And last but not least, if you're seeing this on YouTube, please hit the like and subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing because we've got so much editing to show you, it will blow your mind on every subject. So um, yeah, I hope that was enjoyable. Have a great day and above all, happy editing.